Thank you very much and uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. As I was coming up on the train this morning, I was looking at the attendance list and uh, was struck by how uh, diverse a range of organisations are involved in this programme and also from uh, the fact that you've come from all points of the compass to be here today. So those of you uh, who have travelled some distance and indeed those of you who hasn't travelled very much distance, thank you very much for being here today. I know that this is an important part of the program uh, of support that comes with these grants and uh, I'm delighted that you're here today to take part in uh, the first stage of that program but also it's an opportunity for me as the Minister to uh, focus on the work that you're going to be doing and also say a bit about the work that the Department of Health is doing. That's just a very small bit of background about myself. I've been a Member of Parliament now for 14 years I represent a constituency in South West London um, and one of the things you get to do as a Member of Parliament is actually spend quite a lot of time getting to know the voluntary sector, the volunteers that work in the voluntary sector in your own patch and certainly if the voluntary sector in your patch is doing its job you're made to make sure you learn uh, about that and I've been very fortunate that I have a very active voluntary sector uh, and volunteering base in my community and I think they've taught me some very important lessons over the last 14 years about the value that we really need as a society to attach to uh, volunteering. And not least something very basic that uh, certainly in my town of Sutton uh, is I think probably true in many other towns too. And that's this, that many of our local communities and indeed the public services that underpin them would grind to a halt if we didn't have uh, an effective network of volunteering uh, opportunities and volunteers within them. My local NHS Trust has over 400 volunteers providing a range of voluntary activities, support, peer support and so on. And um, they, they, they often volunteer that if they didn't have those volunteers, they as an organisation would struggle to continue to provide the extra dimension that volunteering brings. And then I, just in the last 12 months, have had the privilege of being a Minister of the Department of Health, a Minister for an area of public policy that has interested me and has been my uh, obsession almost for the last 14 years. I cover uh, both social care and health, I cover long-term conditions, I cover mental health, I cover uh, diabetes, I cover cancer, I cover uh, older people, I cover disability. The list goes on, and I won't uh, run, it through, run through all of it with you. Um, some people have described me as the Minister for Diseases when they look at the list of things that I have within my portfolio. Uh, I prefer to see myself as the Minister responsible for integration between health and social care and within health uh, itself. So today is really about two things. It's about some words, but it's also more importantly about deeds. Uh, the deeds that uh, the department is responsible for translating into action and the words that the department is setting out in this document that uh, we have produced which is the social action for health and well-being building cooperative communities and it sets out uh, both a, a vision for volunteering in health and social care and some of the practical steps both at a national and a local level that we expect the leaders of health and social care organizations to be taking it's a really a message to uh, the, the public sector in health and social care that they need to lift their sights to the opportunities that volunteering can give in terms of realising some of the strategic goals that the Department of Health and the government has for health and social care. Um, I say it's also about deeds. And in a way, the fact that all of you are here is perhaps a way of exemplifying that very fact, because it is about how do we with limited resources, use those resources to best effect to achieve strategic changes, to achieve our strategic goals. And to be in a position today to not just uh, celebrate with you, your success out of over 400 applications, the 51 who've been successful at securing a share of the 2.5 million pound pot in the health and social care volunteer fund. But also to say that we are carrying on with that program that we see uh, another round of uh, applications for national uh, bids from a pot of 2.6 million in the coming year. 
That's part of it, but it's also about being a, mo a model ourselves as a department. It's not good enough for us to preach the value of volunteering, but then not practice it in the way in which we as an employer behave ourselves. So we're also uh, offering, as a model for other government departments and other public services, our support for volunteering scheme, which is very much about enabling the staff within the Department of Health to step up and volunteer. In my speaking notes, it talks about from civil service to civic uh, service, uh, and I think that's a nice way of trying to articulate what uh, it's all about. I've said already that today is about recognising the voluntary sector and the volunteer effort that uh, many of our communities rely upon, and, and very much uh, recognising that contribution from volunteers. It's about saying thank you, something which perhaps doesn't get said often enough. And I think um, it's also about focusing on some of the exciting projects that you embody. And um, I was looking through the, the list of 51 projects, and there is a very diverse range of different ideas that have come out of that uh, bidding process. Uh, public health schemes like uh, the uh, Pompeii Sports and Education Foundation, I think might be here today, uh, who have developed a scheme around tackling obesity, alcohol and smoking in schools, or the foundation one-to-one -one working project where they're working uh, to improve access to services, tackling perhaps amongst some of the more excluded populations in our society, the behaviours that can sometimes themselves form barriers to accessing services. Um, or outreach schemes like the one from Hertfordshire MS uh, Therapy Centre, particularly identifying how to work with uh, BME communities to make sure that they are getting access to the, the right care and support planning and services for long-term conditions. Or um, a scheme from total health care groups. And I'm not going to list all 51, I hasten to add, <laughs> just in case you're all beginning to worry, um, to, to harness the expertise of stroke survivors. And again, this is an interesting theme. How do we use the expertise you gain by actually having directly experienced a medical condition? and uh, in this case particularly working with stroke survivors, survivors to provide advocacy and support. Or, I think probably from the furthest afield, the young people Cornwall and their peer-led training to increase uh, and improve emotional literacy and resilience for 13 to 19 year olds. And when you consider that more than half of the total burden of mental health problems in our society can be traced back to adolescence, a programme that is providing peer support for that population uh, can be really transformational. So what are we trying to achieve? What is the government trying to achieve? Well, it's very simple. We want the NHS, we want local social services, we want public health to recognise the contribution that all of you and the volunteers that work with you uh, can make through social action. The contribution that you can actually make to health and wellbeing. And in very simple terms, this vision is about just reminding people of the benefits of volunteering. That there's, if you like, three key benefits that can come from volunteering. There's the benefit for the organisation itself in terms of providing uh, more service and support. Uh, there's the benefit for the volunteer. There's a lot of research to show the health and well-being benefits of actually giving voluntary efforts. So that's reciprocity in action, not just giving but also receiving through the voluntary activity. And of course, there is the value of this to communities as a whole. So I'm really pleased to be here with you today. Um, there's a very large amount of time allocated for what I hope you didn't think was going to be an exceptionally long speech today. Um, there is time for questions and discussion. I'm more than hope happy to do that uh, about uh, the vision, about the government's program and how it uh, impacts upon your activity. But what's more, I'm really keen not just to be here today, but also to see the fruits of your labours through this fund over the coming year. Because there are lessons, I hope, that will be learnt from what you do that can then be replicated and adopted in other places. Peer support, outreach, these are models that really can make a difference. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for the work that you've already put in to make these bids, and I know that that can be a time-consuming activity and not always rewarded with success. Um, and thank you very much for the leadership that you're showing in your communities. I look forward <coughs> to your questions. Thank you very much.